All right, filling some tricky corners. Uh, here is a, a corner in an opening. There's there's curvature on all these faces, and they come together in a point where I have like this edge that I want to carry through the model, and then so I've got one, two, three, four edges essentially that are coming to a point, and I want to have a large radius through here and through here, and then a fairly large radius to blend out this edge here. Um, and then a small radius to, to fill it up. Well, we use the automated tools, like if I put this in, now this edge starts to creep up uh, and I kind of want it to run straight through. So that's not desirable, but maybe it can be resolved. If we put in the next one, I have to put in this one because if I roll this back and I'm trying to put in this guy, um, I get this result that wants to sweep up. Now I can increase the radius of this, but it's already radius 10 and, and I want it to run through. So if I do this, I get this large edge. So that's definitely not what I want. So that kind of forces me to put a small fillet in, but now I have this weird stuff that's happening here. It looks bad and I can resolve that by throwing this in there. But now I have a pretty messy fillet. I mean, yes, this was quick, but it dips in here and it, it goes back in. And, and this fillet is certainly not following this. So I, this is not how I would do it. Um, I would um, go about it a different way. I would build this by hand. So uh, let's see what that looks like. So first thing I would do is build the large radius in this corner here and then this one. Now, depending on how the model is set up, maybe you want to go in a, you know this one first and this one first. But for this one, I know that this works best. Um, general rule for building blends or fillets on a model, you want to go from the biggest radius to the smallest radius um, as a general rule of thumb. So let's get started. So first I'm going to knit these guys together. Yes, and then I am going to put a cordal fillet, a face fillet in there, these two guys. And you see that this diverges. Um, that's because it's a rolling ball fillet and the angle where these surfaces meet varies throughout here because these both have curvature, varying degrees of curvature, and I want it to be uh, symmetric. So a chordal fillet makes sure that the distance between this rail and this rail is always 10 millimeters. The radius of this fillet changes as it rolls along, but these these two rails are equidistant from each other, and that's what I want. That's aesthetically pleasing. So now I get this one. Uh, and you'll notice that it's not building it right away. The, the surface normals are flipped. This is not a big deal. Um, SolidWorks, because this is a surface model, doesn't know what's in and what is out. And so sometimes you have to flip these in order to uh, make SolidWorks realize um, in which way to build it. So the, the next thing that I want to do is I want to have this blend and I want this blend to meet up with exactly that um, uh, vertex over there and so I need some reference geometry in order to do that so I'm going to start with a plane and I'm going to go through there and then through that vertex so now it's perpendicular to this edge and it goes through that point and I can create a circular profile that I can sweep through both of these and it appears that and that, and that, I'm going to make coincidence, so that's fully constrained now, except that. And then we can sweep a surface through this. Now, it, initially it builds only this, but you have a couple options here. I can go bi-directional, so it uses a complete path. Um, and I'm going to accept that. So now I have a surface that I can use to split this guy, this guy, and this guy that follows this edge and also goes through that vertex. Uh, but in order to do so, it needs to extend past this surface. So I'm going to uh, extend it a little bit. Uh, two millimeters should be enough. And it is. Let's do that again. Two millimeters. Again. So now I can split this guy, this guy, and this guy with this surface. So split, intersection. That's my intersecting tool. And I want to split these guys. Yes. I hide this. So next, what I want to do is I want to build this blend. So I, have, I can get rid of this, this, and this. And then I need a helper surface in between here so that I have something that's, that I can be tangent to. So we can start off by deleting 
the services we don't need. So don't need tables. And you know, I need something in between here. Now we can do this with a boundary surface. We can go from this edge to this edge, and then we can go um, curvature to face, curvature to face. And I would set these aligned with ISO parameter because uh, I know that the ISO parameters of these surfaces give me good flow. Uh, so that works. That's a very quick way of doing it. Um, and so let's accept that. And so now I have this set up as um, um, two surfaces that I can put an, a boundary in between quite easily. Selection manager, because I need multiple edges. Select those. So I got three edges. So that's my one side. That's my other side. Make those both curvature to face. Yes. And I'm going to accept that. So now I have something that's curvature and I have this here. And so we're actually pretty close um, at this point. I need another tubular surface that goes through here that I can use to trim back the front and the inside. Uh, if we want to do this in SOLIDWORKS, uh, we can't use edges directly, so we need to insert a 3D sketch and convert the edges so that we can create a 3D uh, path. Come on, let's get that. Just like that, just like that. So now I have those. I can convert these, and I know that I need to extend past the surface. The nice thing with these splines in 3D is that we can extend them by hand just a little bit. Accept that. So now I have a 3D sketch that I can use with a circular profile, and I want that to be six. And so the the one thing you want to do here is we're going through multiple uh, faces, and the 3D sketch has multiple segments. I want this to be one surface, so I'm going to merge tangent edges. Yep. And so now I can split this front face to be one edge series of edges and I can split that inside face to be another series of edges. So let's do that. Intersection, I'm going to use this tube and I want to create those. Yeah. And it's not doing it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> not sure what's going on here. Hold on, let's try it again. I want to split that. Oh, don't want that. I want that. And I want that. So now I have um, my front. Accept that. Split line, intersection, and then we can do the inside as well. Accept that. Now we can hide this. And now it's just a matter of hide that. Uh, getting rid of uh, the faces we don't want. So delete. Clear. Uh, this is a little bit of is clicking. Make sure we grab everything. Looks like we did. And so now we have this opening uh, and we can fill that in. Now here I will need a little bit of reference geometry and there's two ways of doing it. If you have just straight up SOLIDWORKS, uh, insert a 3D sketch, Bezier curve, one, two, three, four, this creates a 3D spline in a 3D sketch, and then we can uh, supposedly, hold on, I'm not sure why that didn't work. You should be able to make this guy and that guy tangent, and it's not working. Maybe because it's too far away from where it needs to be. This can be quite tedious. Um, And it's not wanting to do it. <laughs> uh, hence, uh, it being quite tedious. Let's see if it will accept this. I want that to be tangent. There we go. And it's no solution found. So you can make this work, but it can be kind of a nightmare. Um, and you'll need something in between here. The uh, another way of doing it is to create a plane through here that is uh, that follows this line and then create a 2D spline. Um, you can also do it without um, 
reference geometry and just you know hope that the result that you're getting here is is what you're after if you set these both uh, to tangency um, sometimes that results in having a wobble here this one actually looks pretty decent um, we can probably accept this result but if you do need um, reference geometry I, I mean I love this plugin and the blend curve um, you just select a point and an edge there's a couple different options but it creates uh, you saw how tedious it was to try and do that with the 3D sketch, and here it's just click, click, done. Um, so I'm going to proceed with that and put a second one in. Call that good. So now I have two blend curves and two edges. So now it becomes quite easy to put a very nicely controlled boundary surface in there. And curve one. Curve two, accept that. So the and if we wanted this to be curvature, we can go back in. And this is actually quite nice. So we have this is just a cubic blend curve that we have right now, but we can set this to curvature, and we can show the um, curvature combs. And so now we have like a really nice G three blend. In between there and we can do the same here curve curve blend edit and we can set that to curvature accept that and so now we can set this to curvature and it'll match because these two curves helper curves are curvature as well and so if we turn on the curvature uh, map we can see that we even though the curvature is radically different here, we get this transition from the dark green where it fades into the, the red, even though the curvature is, is quite different. Um, so, and then the next one we want to build, there's a couple ways of doing it. And you can build actually this whole thing as one surface, but it usually doesn't give a very good result. The, this one you can build straight down, um, which is a, a good option and the one I like better myself is where I follow this line and, and terminate it in this direction and that will you know I will need a little bit of, of reference geometry in order to do that so on the front plane I'm gonna create a little bit of reference geometry this guy and I'm gonna make that tangent accept that and so now if I create a reference plane that is tangent or perpendicular to the front that goes through this line that we've created that is tangent then we can create a 2D um, a 2D curve that goes through there and this is much better behaved than the 3D splines in my opinion we can make that tangent face accept that and we can make that tangent and then if we make these guys um, equal we get a fairly nice behave spline with very gradual curvature going through uh, from side to side accept that and turn that off turn that off and accept that and so now we can build a four-sided surface in between here so we can again use a boundary surface clear that clear um, there's a there's a bug in SolidWorks. I don't know what's causing this, but uh, sometimes when I go save the model and go back, the sketches just jump up with a hundred. So I'll, I'll be at like sketch ten, and then it'll be sketch one hundred and ten, and then it'll turn in sketch two hundred and eleven, and then it you know. And so here you can see I'm at sketch three hundred and eighteen. Um, <laughs> not sure why that's happening. But I'm pretty sure there's not 318 uh, sketches in this model. So those are my two edges. It looks funky right now because it's trying to pick up this whole edge. But if we keep going, um, it'll, it'll trim that off automatically. So here it trims it off. And so then we can set this guy as tangent to face. And we can set that guy as tangent to face. And accept that result. So now we have two surfaces and then the final surface because this is a symmetric model I can mirror these guys over um, but before I do that I'm going to extend this guy and trim this guy back so extend that out uh, 
uh, two millimeters, yes. And then trim that back, mutual, this guy and that guy, and I wanna keep those. And then I gotta, I'm gonna get rid of this guy over here. So delete that. So now I can delete, um, can, I can mirror over the top surface and the two blend surfaces that we just created. So if I go to features, mirror, I wanna mirror bodies and that guy, and I wanna mirror them over the right plane in this case, and I do not wanna knit or merge anything. And that leaves me with one opening um, that is quite easy to fill. And so here we can just simply put another boundary surface in. So let's go to boundary, direction one, that direction, same thing, it's trying to pick up everything, but as soon as we select the edges of the remaining uh, once it'll um, it'll trim that back to the those curves and we can set all of those to tangent and accept that result and so now we have a very nice uh, blend run through it we have a large blend here with uh, two edges that are equidistant from each other that transitions into here following that that edge this one follows this edge around the corner, and then we have this large blend that runs through uh, all the way. And then finally we have this, and you can see, if we look from the front, these guys are parallel to each other. They follow each other. Uh, not 100% perfect, but very, very close. And then if we go back, you can see that that back sweep is also followed very, very nicely. Uh, if we look at the top, you know, we have this beautiful line going through here. So when we started this video, I showed, if I tile this horizontally, I showed two results. Um, this one with automated tools where you get kind of a topological nightmare, uh, in my opinion. And then here you have this really clean edge flow uh, working through the model. So basically what it comes down to, in, in my opinion, is that if you're doing surface modeling and you want good edge flow, you almost always have to build all these surface transitions uh, by hand. It's more time consuming, but it gives you full control over the end result and the end result can look quite nice. All right, hope it helps and see you in the next one.